No trespassing in the chapel. No bodies. Check out this amazing hearse that we got outside here. It's been sitting out here a long time. Here's the embalming room. Stainless steel base. You got the black trim going around it. It's almost like aluminum. Neck holder, neck restraint. And there's the drain down there. There's even like cobwebs hanging off this thing. <laughs> Look at this old gurney too. It's all stainless steel. There you can see the drain a little better in that video from this angle. Right there. And the embalming machine, of course. Gotta have the embalming machine. It's got fluid in it too. You can hear the neighbors out there and the dog barking. You can actually see vine growing through the open window here. Over here you have some makeup. For the deceased, get the bodies prepped for the funerals. You gotta love the creepy foam heads and faces. And down here you have some artery fluid, embalming fluid. And then look at this, this is cool too. Name of deceased, date of embalming, time embalming began, time embalming ended, and signature of embalmer. Look at that old school needle thing. Embalming records from 86, <laughs> cool. Old sheets over there, piled up in the corner. It's pretty cool too, because it actually still has power, so you see the lights are on. This is cool. It's not often that you get to see that either. That table is super cool. I really love that table because you don't see them often like that. This abandoned funeral home dates back to when it first opened its doors in 1989. The nearly 4,000 square foot funeral home featured a large embalming room, a small visitation room, a cozy little chapel, and of course, the casket display room. The funeral home was quite successful during its years of operation, mainly as it was just one of three funeral homes in the area. It also certainly helped that the owner was a very well-known and respected member in the local community, as he was a one-time politician and even had fought for civil rights in the early 1960s, most notably right alongside Martin Luther King Jr. And just like his comrade, MLK Jr., the owner of the funeral home was also a reverend as well as the funeral director, which can also be common with the smaller family-run funeral homes. Your grays and your blues and your whites, and your pinks, pink and whites. Look at that. It looks like most of them have their twins up top. So like this one here is the same as this one down below. And then down below, it's got, this one's got a pink interior with the white exterior. Not too often you get to see this many caskets in a funeral home either. Everywhere you look. <laughs> So now we're entering the chapel. Look at how grimy these pews are. And the walls are all moldy. You see the casket up there. Look at, there you go. Or 
freaking photos on the wall. There he is, that guy. And a good book up there for the funeral services. Wurlitzer. Kind of loud though. Open it up and show you. No bodies. Thank God. Sure smells like it in here. No trespassing in the chapel. No bodies. I showed y'all already. There's definitely no bodies, but it's still cool. So sorry for trespassing in your chapel, but it's a cool location and I couldn't resist. Check out this amazing hearse that we got outside here. It's an old school Broham caddy. Get the blue interior. It's decayed. Broham. Go around the back side of it for you. And actually opens up. Super cool when you can actually see inside of them. It's been sitting out here a long time. It's almost on flats. By 2017, the funeral home had permanently closed and was put up for sale. As of 2022, the one-time successful funeral home still sits abandoned in hopes that someone will come along and save it. Well, that will wrap it up for this abandoned funeral home video, but stay tuned because we got more coming. For more photos and other locations, please check out the website at abandoncentral.com.